The fate of the realms will be decided today. Armageddon will be upon you all. Because Mortal Kombat 1 just came out with a brand new timeline, I thought we'd go back and review the end of the first ever timeline. Mortal Kombat Armageddon. A game that also has kart racing and create a fighter. Not to mention a roster including absolutely everyone. There's just so many options. What am I, the Denny's salad bar? And as great as that is, that's not what we're here for. We're here for the conquest mode, the main story. So let's just dive on into it. The story begins in the realm of Adenia, home of the god Argus, the protector, and his mortal wife Delia, the sorceress. And at this time, they have just hidden their two sons away inside of rocks to preserve them for the future. Now, why would they do that? Well, Delia had a vision of Armageddon, where the combatants have all become too powerful, and if they keep fighting each other, all that immense power will eventually tear the realms apart. These combatants must be dealt with. Because of this, the Elder Gods intervened by creating a large pyramid with a flame on top. Whoever gets there first wins unlimited godly power. I want that, says everyone as a free-for-all breaks out. <laughs> But little do they all know, that flame on top is the fire spawn Blaze, created by Delia to destroy as many fighters as possible, ultimately preventing Armageddon. Yeah, but someone has to defeat him. That's where Taven and Dagon come in. Taven, ah! it is good to see you have awakened. Orin? What happened? Playing as Taven, Orin gives me the mission briefing. You are now on a quest versus your brother Dagon. Starting here in Earthrealm, you'll be sent on a path to your father's temple. There you'll find a special gift that'll aid your journey. I want to wish you good luck. We're all counting on you. Starting off in the jungle, we start running. But I gotta watch my step. There could be quicksand. So we make our way down the treacherous path that leads to the entrance of my father's temple, which was guarded by black dragon thugs, who were held inside cages like animals. And let's just say you could put away that hummus, cause I ain't PETA. Fight! Home run! No, no, no! Then Cabal comes out like, you're strong, you should join the black dragon. No. <laughs> And that's the end of the Black Dragon. Now into my father's temple, where I analyze the prophecy of my quest written on the walls. That looks like Mother having one of her visions. And this must be Father speaking with the Elder Gods. It appears as if my brother and I are attacking some demon. Gee willikers, I say. I don't remember this happening. I must have been in that rock a long time. Then some red commandos ambush me. When over yonder, I spot the altar at my father's temple. But watch out, there's a funhouse mirror behind me. Upon placing my hand on the altar, my hologram father gives me all the details on the quest. And before I can process all this new information, I'm incapacitated. By Sector. It was him the whole time. We're then transported to the Takunin warship for questioning. Now I can get the information I need. What message did you receive at the altar? Answer me. Then right on cue, Sonya Blade launches an attack on the warship, and I get out of there faster than you can say, Santa, stop. This isn't a chimney. <laughs> then Sector comes in like... The ship blows up, and I fly away. Right back to my dragon friend, Orin, to report my findings. Where is the weapon your father left you? So pretty much, I was supposed to receive a special weapon at the temple, but it was stolen. Luckily, my mother also left me a magical gift at her temple. I must travel to the north. Mother has left me an item in her temple. In Arctica, land of the Tengu warriors, with their Wolverine Freddy Krueger-style weaponry. <laughs> They were much of a problem, but I wasn't ready for this yeti. And boom, it gets shot off screen. It's Sonya Blade. She's been tracking me since Sector's ship. What is Sector planning? I don't even know who that is, I respond. We fight, and she leaves forever. But then, like surely, I make my way to the temple, only to be interrupted by more red guys, or red dragon members, as this says. Who are they, and why do they keep showing up in my area? Causing mass hysteria. Hey! My mother's temple is here, but it's now occupied by the Lin Kuei. And hey, we got inside the Lin Kuei temple, or my mother's. And inside, I find Frost. <laughs> I am Frost. Sub-Zero? She's delusional. Thinks I'm Sub-Zero. I say, hey, toots. Name's Taven. 
Then the real Sub-Zero arrives. I am Sub-Zero, Grand Master of the Lin Kuei. <laughs> But unlike all the other fights, he stays here because he matters. I'm like, this is my mother's temple. You and your clan don't belong here. And he's like, whoa, just take it easy, man. This temple has been abandoned for years. Your tattoo? What about it? He then notices the tattoo on my face and that it matches this door in the room. The door to my mother's gift. It seems my brother has already been here to retrieve his gift. But if it's been abandoned for years, then why is my brother's door already open? He must have been awakened way before I was. But how? Hey. Anyways, the gift was a godly set of armor. How cool. But you know what's not cool? Smoke using his powers to turn the Lin Kuei into evil shadow ninjas that stab their own people in the back. You will not escape. <laughs> then from out of nowhere, I get a lesson in astrology. Noob has throwing stars, you get it? What's your sign, I ask him, as we square up. Who is he? He doesn't seem human. By the way, Noob is also Sub-Zero's corrupted brother, Bihan. If you didn't already know that, I'm sure a lot of you did. So after helping Sub-Zero take down the deadly duo and their minions, I ask him, you know anything about those red ninjas that keep attacking me? He says, yeah, they're called the Red Dragon, and they reside in Shard Mountain. Shard Mountain. Thank you, Sub-Zero. You matter. Fun fact about Sub-Zero, he is on my wall that I look at when I record. But now that I know the location of the Red Dragon stronghold, I must return to Orin. So my good friend Orin makes me a portal to Shard Mountain, and right away I'm not greeted with open arms. I must enter the Red Dragon Caverns, where looky here, I meet my younger brother Dagon, who looks much older. I am older. Says he's been tracking me down for ages trying to kill me. Why would you send your clan after me? To kill you. What? The prize will be mine, Taven. Now why was he awake so much longer than me? That's not fair. Then he leaves for some reason, trusting his lackey Movado to take care of me, which didn't work out too well for him and his elastic bands. <laughs> Movado snapped away on an elastic cord. I would have liked seeing that. Ooh, hey look, Kano's here. He's like, the red dragon is turning their own people into lizard mutants, then scurries away before I can respond. Oddly enough, Kano is no threat in this game, and that's all you see of him. No, but that's not the case for Quan Chi. Kill him! No, I don't fight him here because he means a lot to the story. You'll see. Then I find Dagon's dragon, Karo. He's been enslaved, and Reptile's yelling slurs at him. Get away from him, lizard! I am Reptile! Karo, you're injured! I have been enslaved here by Dagon. So it turns out Karo accidentally released Dagon too early. He thought he got the signal from Blaze, but turns out he overheard a Taco Bell commercial from the other room. And Dagon wasn't too happy about our parents' manipulation, so we killed them. That's terrible. On the bright side, Karo just sent him through this portal to the nether realm, so I can quickly follow him. But I'll have to keep my eyes peeled for quicksand. And to make a long story short, I descend into the nether realm. <laughs> And from a distance, I see Shinnok getting beat up. I knew him as an elder god, so to me, he's a trusted ally that I must help. Step away from Lord Shinnok! You defended me against the she-devil Li Mei, and for that, I am forever grateful. He tells me about how he's been cast out of elder godhood, and cursed to reside here for eternity. And if I help him reclaim his throne atop this spire here, he'll tell me where Dagon went, because he just saw him. Help me clear out the invaders, and you will gain my favor. In every game, Shinnok's been very trustworthy, so let's trust him. Shinnok's spire. Let's go to the spire. Get away from Lord Shinnok. Ah! So we fight through floors of various enemies, mostly demons. Havoc's on one of the floors. Shiva's also at the top. Shiva! Followed by Kentaro. Not really a pivotal part of the story. It just allows Taven to question why everyone hates Shinnok right now. Why did they attack you? There is no time to discuss that now. Because who would hate an elder god? My thanks to you, Taven. Shinnok then thanks me for helping him reclaim his throne, then reveals that Dagon has gone to Earthrealm, so he kindly sends me there after him. You must leave now. I told you he was a problem. But to my surprise, Shinnok was lying. He's working with Dagon. You shall be the victor and the catalyst of my ascension. He also revealed the quest to all mortals, which pretty much sets the Armageddon timeline in motion. I can't believe Shinnok would lie to me. Now I know why this game's rated M. 
lying. None of this makes sense. Now, questioning what just happened, we meet back with Orin to ask about Shinnok's fall from grace. But oh no, it appears Quan Chi put him in critical condition. Sending me here was a trick to trap me in Earthrealm, so I'm no longer a factor in the quest. Luckily, Orin has enough power to send me to where Quan Chi went, Outworld, so I can kill him. I will find this Quan Chi and make him pay with his life. Okay, Outworld, it's Shao Kahn's fortress. After getting crushed by a ball, I enter Shao Kahn's dungeons, where I find the legendary Shijinko locked in a cell. I am Shujinko. And right on brand, he says, I got locked up on purpose so I can get closer to Shao Kahn and kill him and his associates. They're all upstairs in his throne room, by the way. Taven finds this funny because obviously he's not aware of Shijinko's unlimited knowledge and power from the Deception Conquest. He then disappears, and I never see him again. So I hop on an elevator and enter a room with a Shao Kahn Colossus statue. <laughs> Ooh. Then I run up on Goro, who's keeping guard by just looking off into the distance. <laughs> followed by General Reiko. He says, hey, you're pretty strong. You should join Xiao's army. Never, I say. <laughs> now we finally make it to the throne room where Quan Chi, Shang Tsung, Onaga, and Shao Kahn are all forming an alliance to ensure victory in the big quest. They're also all aware of me and Dagon, but Quan Chi still thinks I'm trapped in Earthrealm. I have trapped one of them in Earthrealm. The other is in Edenia. So off to Adenia they go to kill my brother. Now I go to follow him, but Raiden shows up to stop me. Do not go through that portal. Let Shao Kahn win to protect Earthrealm. Raiden's one of my favorite characters, but he makes very questionable decisions in almost every game. I will prevent you from completing your quest. <laughs> to the Adenian ruins. Hopefully there's no quicksand. At last, home in Adenia. And hey, Scorpion's here. I am Scorpion. I seek revenge. He wants to kill me and my brother to stop all of this. But just like everyone else, it doesn't work. <laughs> Then Dagon rolls in to finish me off for good. I was hoping Scorpion would kill you and spare me the effort, but it looks as though I will have to finish you. When Blaze, in a smaller human-like form, pops in to say, Stop. You're in the wrong location. Let me transport you to the right location. The quest will conclude when one of you defeats me, but we must make haste. If any of the other combatants kill me, Armageddon will be upon you all. Then let's get this over with. So we transport to the final area, where Dagon challenges me for the Blaze fight. And he has two swords because he stole mine from Father's Temple. What a c Now I have to kill him. Fight! That's what you get, brother. Dagon has fallen. Now you must fulfill your obligation. And right on cue, the intro scene starts happening from below, and the pyramid rises, and Blaze says, It's time. With a victory, all the combatants will either die or be stripped of their powers. It's a coin toss. Like a coin toss. Which side of the coin am I? It is unknown even to me. He sounds like a jigsaw tape. Hello, Taven. You're probably wondering why my mouth is moving like this. Take your sword, walk through the archway, and finish the quest. We then get the arcade ladder screen, and that takes me out of the story a bit, but I'll allow it. And Blaze is in big form now. Time to take on one of the most forgotten bosses in Mortal Kombat history. Round one, fight! <laughs> We've done it. My victory granted me godhood, and the extra power from Blaze went through my magical armor and back into the other combatants. So it was neither of the two outcomes, but actually a new third one, where nothing really changes besides me becoming a god. Now, in Mortal Kombat 9, it was Shao Kahn on top of the pyramid, but fortunately for me in this game, he fell into quicksand. And that's the video. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, why don't you drop a like down below? Maybe even a comment. And better yet, why don't you check out one of these two videos I have right here? Here's my deception video, and here's something else. And very importantly, I want to give a shout out to my electrifyingly handsome patrons that are somewhere behind me. If you want to join this list, the link is down below. By the way, thank you all so much for the support. It means so much to me. I know this video is a bit late, but I was across the country for a wedding, so it like knocked off five days. So I think I'm, I'm done with everything. Summer's over and I'm ready to hunker down and just make some videos, huh? So this has been Mortal Kombat Armageddon, the game. And that's about it for me. I'll see you guys in the next one.